All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to another great episode on your favorite political talk show, The Truth with Ben Jokes. Now, insecurity in Nigeria has continued to worsen. As a matter of fact, the first three months of this year, 2024, are already worse than the first six months of last year. And I remember clearly that the abduction of Chibo girls was the major issue that the APC rode on to discredit the Jonathan administration. But under Buhari, the abduction of school children happened on five different occasions. Can you now see how the APC has taken this country from frying pan to fire? But the worst is still cooking because after just eight and a half months under Tinubu, school abduction has happened three times. Three times in eight and a half months. The latest coming just two days ago in Kaduna State, where over 287 pupils were kidnapped from one school and their principal was killed. And while all this was happening, a House of Rep member from Kaduna State, El Rufai's son to be precise, could not see all these things happening in the north. And what he could say was that Peter Obi is not close to his father and to other governors that have ruled in Nigeria. And Nigerians came down on him. They took him to the cleaners, proving to him that he, his father, and the entire generation of all those governors he has called cannot come close to the impact that Obi has had on the political space of this country and the entire Africa. And while we were still schooling him, gunmen struck again. This time around, they went into a mosque in northern Nigeria and they unleashed mayhem on the people. And Nigeria said, okay, northerners, where is the effect of the Muslim Muslim ticket now? Before I show you how it happened and how Nigerians reacted, let me quickly show you this update. Kaduna state government hires private negotiator to meet terrorists, secure release of 287 pupils. The Kaduna state government has reportedly engaged a private negotiator to interact with the terrorists that abducted 287 students and teachers from the government secondary school and LEA primary school, Kuriga 1, in Kaduna State's Chikun local government area of the state. A reliable source from the state government confirmed this development, adding that the state government had reached out to the bandits through a private negotiator, names withheld, for the immediate release of the students and teachers. According to Punch, the private negotiator is a highly important figure who has already negotiated multiple abductions with robbers. Recall that reporters had reported how terrorists stormed the LEA primary school Kuriga around 8.30 a.m. on Thursday, shortly after the assembly gathering, and abducted the pupils and some staff members of the schools. It was discovered that the secondary school was relocated to primary school grounds due to insecurity in the neighborhood. Governor Uba Sani, who visited the school on Thursday, had said that the abducted students will be rescued safely. Sani, while addressing the community member, said, In my capacity as your elected governor, I am assuring you that by grace of God, all the children will return on hot. However, Less than 48 hours after the abduction, which triggered national outrage, an official source had said the government reached out to the bandits for negotiation to release the 287 abducted pupils and the staff members of the school. The government has established contact and reached out to the bandits for negotiation through a popular bandit negotiator. The negotiator was the one who worked for the return of some of the students abducted some years back. He had negotiated the return of so many abductees in the past. He negotiated the return of those students abducted in Katina State years back. Two more government officials verified the development to punch, but requested anonymity due to the delicate nature of the situation. They also refused to offer any additional information, citing concerns that doing so would jeopardize ongoing efforts to gain the victim's release and put them in danger. Now, after that abduction took place in Kaduna, Tinubu and Nuhu Ribadu told the governor that he shouldn't worry that they are working on it. They will get those pupils released. But the governor has ignored them. 
He doesn't have faith in them anymore. Now he's going on to negotiate with the terrorists. And they say there is even a popular negotiator. The guy is known in the region as the one who negotiates when people are abducted. So the government has become completely useless there. What a shame. And look at how Nigerians reacted. Look at some of the tweet reactions. This tweet here says, everything in Nigeria is transactional. Instead of crushing the criminals, government wants to pay them. Are you people okay? Mm. And this tweet here says, how can a whole government be negotiating with terrorists instead of getting rid of them? This is new law for Nigeria. It is, my brother. And this tweet here says, the government is not sincere in its fights against terrorism in Nigeria. It is unfortunate that the people who suffer it most are vulnerable poor children. It is a very pathetic situation. Mm. And Olusha here says, please tell us about those private negotiators who are so brave to confront terrorists that the government could not face. This country, everybody just they catch crews. That is the APC for you. And this tweet here says, laugh out loud, funny people. After that, when I go list them as one of the achievements of government, rescuing people you kidnapped, when I go lensha, flourishing business in the region, it is booming. It has become a business in the northern region. What a shame. Now, let us look at how those gunmen attacked the worshippers in that mosque on Friday, unleashing mayhem. Look at how the papers reported it. Insecurity worsens. As terrorists invade Kaduna mocks, kill worshippers during Friday prayers. Gunmen believed to be terrorists on Friday invaded a mosque and killed two worshippers during Friday prayers at Angua Makera Kwasakwasa community burning Gwari local government area of Kaduna state. A resident of the community confirmed the attack adding that the incident occurred around 2 p.m. on Friday. According to Daily Trust, Hudu Kwasakwasa, a village leader, also corroborated the incident, saying the bandits opened fire on the worshippers. The two worshippers killed were among other Muslims attacked at the Jumat mosque in Angwa Makera when the bandits opened fire on them and abducted others today. The victims have been buried at Old Kuyelok Cemetery, he narrated. He claimed the people were in the second rakat of the Salat when they were attacked forcing the survivors to flee for their life. He claimed that the same bandits abducted about nine persons a few days ago in Angwa Kanawa, a hamlet in the Kwasakwasa area. He requested assistance from the relevant authorities, claiming that the bandits were ravaging the communities uncontested. Mm. This happened barely 24 hours after bandits abducted over 287 students in the neighboring Chikun local government area of the state. The state government and the police command are yet to react to the mock incident as the police public relations officer, ASP Mansur Hassan, couldn't be reached on the phone. He is also yet to reply to a text message sent to him seeking clarification. Now, all these are happening in Kaduna State, but El Rufai's son with his long neck only sees Peter Obi. Because the man is a thorn in their flesh. And all he said is the truth. But because they are haters of truth, they find him as their biggest enemy. And look at how Nigerians reacted. Look at some of the tweet reactions. This tweet by Buki says, Belo El Rufai, this is your state. But Peter Obi is your headache. He's saying the same thing that I'm saying. And this tweet by Pantaza says, They are taking the battle to their own doorsteps, which is good. Very soon, it will get to the doors of those sponsoring them. This thing they are breeding will be the one to eat them up. It will eat the APC up. And this tweet by Mama says, Belo El Rufai, this is your state and you have the gods with your long neck to talk to Peter Obi, who is greater than your entire generation. I'm telling you, the boy is so shameless. And this tweet here says, I thought Akpabio said security is now better under Tinubu. Let's keep lying to ourselves. This is what these terrorists do. The moment the APC guys come out and lie to the people and they say that security is improving, the, the bandits and gunmen will go on rampage. They will start doing some crazy things to show that they are the ones in control. And this tweet by Daniel Peter says, It was gathered that the terrorists stormed the mosque in Gaala Baba area of Savon Lai community and opened fire on the mosque, killing the imam and one other person instantly. That is another mosque. 
that is another mox close to where this one happened hey and this tweet by easy he says nice one muslim muslim ticket muslim muslim crime that is it what is the effect of the muslim muslim ticket now and this tweet by christy says what can possibly go wrong that hasn't gone wrong yet that is a big question everything is falling apart at what point will nigerians say they need to just impeach these guys and just just throw all these guys away because what is it they are contributing the apc has been in charge of this country for nine years all that has been happening is nigerians moving from one bad news to another daily there is always something to cringe about always something for people to worry and be depressed about throughout the nine years of the apc and this is how it will continue until nigerians get them out of power but until then make i still enter town <laughs> make i go get some ogbonge political news where una go like why because that because of una now i day here so don't go away don't go away.